What is the best way to manage tasks with Google Workspace tools? And tasks have been on a bit of a journey, to be honest. They started out pretty basic and rudimentary. They were just on a sidebar inside of Gmail. But bit by bit, tasks have got better and better. And they're now right across the Google ecosystem and they're actually useful. In the past, I really didn't recommend anyone ever use tasks because it was just a bit of a pain to go into Gmail to access them and they didn't really do anything. Like you could task an email and that would let you, you know, remember to go and check an email, but it did nothing else. And it wasn't really available anywhere else. It was only available in Gmail on the web. And it was basically not much better than just starring an email or labeling an email and it didn't really do anything else. Now tasks is right across the Google ecosystem and they've done a pretty good job of making it useful inside Workspace. You can access tasks from inside your Gmail. You can access tasks from a sidebar. You can access tasks from a dedicated tasks window within calendar. And there's even a mobile app for tasks as well. And if you create a task in one place, it goes right across Google Workspace. So it's accessible everywhere you can access tasks. Also, if you create a task inside a Google chat room, well, that also goes to your task system and it goes everywhere. If you put a due date on your task, that's also going to appear on your calendar. So you've got tasks everywhere. I'm going to give you a demo of that now and kind of show you how these things work. Some of the things that I use tasks for and where I recommend you use it, where I recommend you don't use it as well, because I only use tasks for really kind of specific things right now because I've got other apps that I use for getting work done outside of Google Tasks. But on the right hand column here, if I click onto tasks, you can see here we've got a number of different tasks sitting here in my list. Now, some of these are overdue, some of these I don't have any for today actually, but if I want to create a new task, it's pretty straightforward, right? I'll say here, so I can hit the return button it prompts me to add a new task. Very, very simple. Now, if I choose, if I decide, I can give it a due date. That's pretty cool. I can even create recurring tasks now, which is pretty useful. Thank you, Google. And uh, I can star a task. And that puts all my tasks on one starred list of tasks, which is uh, pretty cool. Oh, go ahead and leave this one, uh, leave this one start. So that's the first place that we find our tasks. Let's see where else we can get access to our tasks. So the next place would be in my Google Calendar. So my calendar's got all my standard stuff in here. Now you see a whole bunch of green stuff up the top. That's actually my Asana calendar. So it's lots of tasks that I've got on Asana. If I unsubscribe from that calendar or just hide it for now, that'll make this a little bit cleaner for us. And there's two places I can access tasks inside my calendar. Now the first one is again on the right hand side. You can see here my task is sitting here. And there's actually a second place. There's now a dedicated task window here in my calendar. This is where you really access the heart of tasks in Google. This is used to be like I think tasks.google.com or shoppinglist.google.com was one kind of iteration of it. Now it all just sits in your calendar in the tasks window. So we've got a dedicated tasks window, which to me seems, I guess, a little bit unnecessary when we've just got them sitting here in calendar. It's exactly the same thing. So you may as well just go to calendar and, and switch over to tasks. Now, immediately you'll see there's different lists here of tasks, right? So we've got your the standard like my tasks. We've got another list here. So, you know, here I might choose, let's rename this list. I don't know, maybe this is gonna be my shopping list, right? And I can create as many of these as I like. Here we go, create a new list that's on the left-hand side. So if I create a new list, home, right? Stuff to do at home, okay, cool. So I can go ahead and create as many tasks as I like there. When I'm in this all tasks window, it's gonna consolidate all those tasks, milk and eggs. Sorry if you're uh, vegan or lactose intolerant. When I switch back to my calendar, so I've got a drop down here where I can choose stuff on my tasks or shopping list or home list. That's gonna allow me to switch between the different lists there. Personally, I find when I wanna work with my tasks in Google, I tend to switch over to this task view and I've got multiple lists of tasks. Now, I've got two accounts. I've got my business account that's here. I don't use this for tasks much, but I also have my personal account and I've got lots of tasks there. That's where I've got a shopping list. I've got stuff at home. I've got stuff that I wanna buy online. All of those different things sit in their own list of tasks. The only thing that's really missing here that I'd love to see that Google haven't yet implemented is the ability to share a task list. Previously, when using the shopping list feature or using Google Keep, you can actually collaborate on a list with someone else. So you could share a list with someone and it would just share that one list. 
and then multiple people could add things. Perfect for a shopping list, right? Unfortunately, you can't do this here. If you wanna collaborate on a list of things with other people, you need to create a room, like a chat room, and create shared tasks there. I'm not 100% sure if those tasks work across different domain names. We can test that when I get to that, but that's how you access tasks if you wanna share any kind of tasks with someone else. When you set a due date on a task, and as an example, this test task, I'm gonna make this one due today, it's gonna show up on my calendar, which is pretty cool. So if I switch back to calendar mode and I make sure my tasks are here on the calendar, you'll see here that I've got test tasks, that one that I just created sitting here on my calendar. And there's also four pending tasks. Now pending means they're due in the past and I didn't get them done. So they just show up here in pending tasks, which is pretty cool. Now by default, a task has like an all day due date, meaning that this is here basically for the whole day and it doesn't really matter what time you get it done. And that's useful because quite often you'll have tasks where you don't know what time you're gonna to get to it, but you wanna to get to it during the course of the day. And that's the reason that this is you know, maybe not a calendar event, that this is just a task sitting there is because I don't know exactly what time I'm gonna do it. But if you do know what time you're gonna do it or you wanna allot some time to get it done, you could drag and drop a task and you can put it on your calendar. Now it just takes a little uh, 30 minute slot there on the calendar and you can see here it's updated the due date to be uh, today at that time 12 p.m. for my task there. So if you want to do like kind of time blocking or at the start of the day you've got a bunch of tasks sitting here and you want to you know move them onto your calendar so you know what order you want to get them done and organize your day that's a great way to do that. Now you'll hear more from me on what other tools I use for task management I'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you just have tasks that you need to get done on a particular day and you want a simple task system, this works great. So, okay, we've covered how to create a task. We've covered the calendar as well, where you can access tasks. Let's have a look at what else we can do with tasks getting a little bit more advanced. Thanks for watching, but we're not done yet. There's a part two waiting for you.